But in this video, we're gonna make a few changes and do a little bit of a review of what we've done so far. This is actually the second time I've done this video, except the first time my mic wasn't turned on. So I've kind of undone nearly everything, I think, that I had sorted in here. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is make it a little bit easier for us to create new tricks and traps in the game. And then I'm gonna show you how I would create one um, afterwards as well as set the rest of the traps up. So we're gonna do a little bit of a fix going back through. The first thing we're gonna do is open up our player. Now you may have a collision shape on here, but I've actually changed it to a collision polygon. And the collision polygon, you can add points up here. You can also move these points around. Um, and I'm just gonna make it a kind of a shape like this. Now the reason that I've done this is because at the edges here I get control over how many pixels I can kind of step up onto. So this here will let me step up onto something one pixel high, but anything higher than that it's going to bump against this bit and not actually let me uh, move up higher. So it's just going to correct any a few small errors that I might have. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an area onto this, oops, not onto there, just down here, an area 2D, I'm gonna call this death zone, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a collision shape for this. Now the collision shape is going to be a capsule 2D, and we're gonna make it quite small. My mouse scrolling out is a bit um, buggy at the moment. I'm gonna make it quite small, probably about that size there. All right, so with this done here, you can go ahead and we're gonna set a signal from here. Um, now I've already written this code, so it's gonna look a little bit funny. Um, I'm gonna say when an area is entered, and then it's gonna to connect to this code here. Now this is the code that is going to check uh, what's actually entered the area, and then we're gonna reset it or um, set the, you know, to the respawn point. So this here, is very similar to what we've written before in the uh, the trap code, except we're gonna put it in the player code now, so we just have one place for it. And then we're gonna label the traps as deadly. So if the area that collides with is in this group deadly, um, check for a reset, and if that's false, so in other words, if it doesn't reset because we've got a checkpoint, then we can set global position equals, you know, set it to the latest checkpoint. So that's that done for the player. Now we're gonna to need to open up these bits of, um, the, these different uh, traps. So I've opened the swinging trap on my area 2D. I've actually removed the code from it completely. So originally there was a, some code here and I just click on this and hit the X. We don't need that code anymore. Uh, what we need to do is go to the area and we can actually disconnect that signal. But in groups, we're gonna add it to the deadly group. And then on the animation player, these are all things that I've kind of discovered in the last few days playing around. This button here is the auto load button. So we don't even need the script to auto load that. Now I've gone over to the spike trap and similarly I've removed the script on the area. Notice that these are different. The swinging trap has a, a general base node and the area is down here. But on the spike trap, the area is the root node. So that's where we're going to put the, the deadly group there. Uh, the blade trap is exactly the same, um, but the spinning blade is slightly different. We still need the code for this. So on the area 2D, I put that as deadly, but the code for this, we don't need this bit, that can go, but we still need this stuff at the top. We don't actually need that one. We just need this code here. Okay, so we need that code there. And that code uh, is what will uh, make it move along a path. I'm gonna go to animation player, make it um, auto play that one on the spike trap animation player auto play that one and then hit save save the player and I'll go into the world and in the world I should now be able to hit that restarts get hit by these spikes restarts I feel like those spikes are a bit too slow oops oh my goodness can't even play my own game. There we go. Now these aren't animating. We'll just test this water here. The water works. Uh, these don't actually do anything. 
Um, and I can tell you why. It's not because we've done anything wrong in the scene. It's because when I've added these two here as spinning blade, um, I've had to make them both local um, and also I had to make the paths unique uh, over, over here. I had to make this uh, unique so I could change them. And so what that means is any changes I made to this spinning blade haven't come through, but it's a pretty simple fix. All I'm gonna do is click on animation player and auto play that. That's, that's it. Click on area 2D and uh, add that to deadly. Now, if I had done that first, uh, I wouldn't have this problem. So animation player, auto play that one. Um, area 2D, deadly. And I've got one more, which is animation player. That, and area 2D, deadly. Now, if I go ahead and play now, I should be good to get through here. And this one is actually not too hard. Okay, so I've got up to there. Now you'll notice here that I've added some uh, new tiles into my tile set. So let's go ahead and have a look at how you might do that. So in the, I know I still haven't done the background video yet. In the tile map, what I've got is a bunch of tile tiles in here. So that's the, the auto tile, but then I've got this one where I can just select individual tiles to put in the scene in different places. Um, and that can be used quite effectively. I might decide, oh, I want to put that there, have a bit of a, a little kind of shrub thing there. Uh, let's see, I could put, you know, I could put some of these rocks down on the ground and they'll just add a little bit of flavor to it, a shrub, etc. So I can put those in there or I could go ahead and put these in. Now this also has other things which we'll look at later, pickups and power-ups and stuff. Um, but from what we've got now, the last thing I want to do, oh, sorry, I was actually going to show you how to add that. So if I go tile map, inspector, tile set, you can just hit plus down here to add new ones. And then when you go in, you set the region. Uh, I've used a new atlas for this one. So an atlas, uh, if I just delete this, I don't want to delete it because then it's going to come up. So I'll do it again as a separate one. So plus uh, sprites, I'll use that one. That's already on the list. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Um, I'll just do new atlas and I'll select a new region. Ooh, kind of annoying because it's already taken up. Um, let's just do a new atlas on this one. I'll show you how it works. So new atlas, uh, select that region there as an atlas and then it's pretty much the same as an auto tile, except you don't get the bit mask. So I can just go collision and I can go ahead and select these and put colliders on them, etc. Um, the difference is when I go to the tile map, you'll see now this is the auto tile here and I can just pick which tile I want to put in manually. So it's kind of like manually uh, placing them. It's, it's very useful, okay, because you may not want to place a door in every location. You may just want to have it in one location. Um, and, you know, boxes. I can put a few crates and stuff over here and start kind of building up a different part of the level in here with some weird floating crates there. And so on and so forth. So that's how you add those in. Um, you can also name these regions. So this is the, the region name here. So I might say um, tile atlas and then if I click here and go back to this region I can name this auto tile just delete that and then when I go back to the tile map you'll see that's called auto tile that's called tile atlas so you can name them different things you can also have just individual sprites come in um, there's lots of things you can do with this you see I've added some kind of little root things on here and so on. I don't know why that one's just floating by itself and that one there. Um, and I've also redesigned the level. So the level design here is, um, I've kind of, you know, built it up bit by bit. And there's nothing stopping you from testing this by just going, well, let's just move the player all the way over to here because I don't want to have to do that first half the whole time. 
and we can we can do testing like that. One other thing I did was fix the camera so it doesn't zoom in at the start. And that was very simple. I just added those two lines to the beginning of uh, in the ready function. So we get the center, we get the target, we store those two things. And then I set the camera's position to the target's position, which is the player. And then I set the zoom uh, to the, the zoom scale that I was using down the bottom here, which is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So as soon as it starts, it goes to there. Now, you could also, if you wanted instantaneous zoom, you could use this down the bottom here. So I could do this. I'll just comment those out. And then same with this one here. I'll just comment these out. Uh, this is going to be slightly different though because this vector is going to be 1, 1 and the target is going to be uh, center position equals center dot global position. Okay, and then, actually I don't think we need the word global position, it's already a position. And so now if I run it, what I should have is if I push Q, I think, no, Z zooms, it's just an instant zoom, except for the zoom in, that's a... Uh, that's not really working there, is it? Why would that not be working? I'm not sure. Maybe I've edited the wrong bit of bit of code, um, or it maybe the camera has a smooth. Here we go. Smoothing enabled. Disable that, and it should just let me switch between the two. I'm probably going to leave it like that, to be honest, um, because I'm I'm not a big fan of that transfer. And now I can kind of see everything very quickly. You probably don't want to be playing uh, while it's zoomed all the way out. So you can see I've still got quite a bit of space to fill out here. How could I add in a new trap? Well, I've actually done it with the water. So what I've done here, I've added an area node. I've added some sprites. I've got an animation player. You'll notice this animation player is actually animating three things. The water, the splashing at the top, the splashing at the bottom. And we've got a collision shape for the area node that simple so i could also um, i am going to do some like fireball traps and things like that but we've done a whole lot of movement we've done a whole lot of other stuff and adding different traps like this is not difficult it's just a matter of being creative being creative with the animation player turning off collision shapes at certain points and making sure that you mark uh, them as deadly so if you have any ideas for traps just Put them down below in the comments. If I think that they're uh, interesting enough, I'll, I'll throw a few in. I'll do a few videos on them. Um, I am gonna do one on firing like fireballs and stuff and an enemy that, that kind of wanders backwards and forwards. Um, so those will be coming up. But for now, I think we fixed it up and made it a lot simpler for ourselves. I don't actually need this code on here, by the way. Uh, the code has nothing in it. So I can delete that code there. So we're actually making a whole lot of things without even writing a single line of code now. We've set the player up to take care of the, uh, the collisions with the death part, and that's working well. So the next few videos, we'll go through and add, a, add like a fireball thing or uh, something that you know, shoots spikes across the screen or down the screen um, and how to deal with that. And then a simple enemy that's moving backwards and forwards. I'm not going to make the enemy attack or have a whole lot of really complex AI um, because it's it's not really that kind of game that I'm looking at. We just want a, a moving obstacle uh, as such. So that'll be in the next few videos.